Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese Romland in the past week. Now just seeing the wider framing than usual because I just want to include something. <laughs> New drawings in my shop if anybody is interested in. Honestly, I put this on like two weeks ago and I forgot to talk about it on all my videos. That's how zen I have been about running an online shop that literally does no promotion. I did a couple of drawings under the skin so Anyone who's interested, you can go and check out um, just a couple of small things that I've added. Nothing big, nothing grand. Doesn't involve a huge factory making it for me. <laughs> okay, let's get into talking about dramas. To start with it, there is a drama that I missed that went live on April the 1st. Once it started airing, a lot of people were like, this is such a cute, unusual project. So I went and check it out. It's rather interesting. It's on Mango Television called Nian Nian Wu Ming. The killer is also romantic. It's unusual because it's a tiny drama, about two hours and a half and three hours. They just cut it into 10 minutes per episode. So you have like 18 episodes, but each episode is literally only eight to not 10 minutes. And this year we've seen already a couple of projects like this tiny tiny super short and it's loo drama you know you go to the loo <laughs> and instead of taking out the magazine and flip through its pages you look at one episode of one to ten minutes like tiny dramas showing you these days the fierce competition between short video focused platform and long video focused platform their fight in china that's the current situation although from a drama reviewer's point of view i just never thought of these things as the same category or breed of things you can write poetry you can also write novels in the same language they use the same characters or same letters, same vocabularies in that one language. But you can't say just because of that, they are the same thing. Anyway, that's just my opinion. But this is a cute drama. So far, I've seen only very good receptions of it. Then let's talk about a couple of dramas that have announced during this week when they're going to go live. First, on April the 11th, a drama should go live on Mango Television. It's called 没有工作的一年, A Year Without a Job. That's very accurate, direct translation. And it's contemporary setting drama, as the title suggests, about a main character who lost her job for a year. And you see her bank account saving number keeps dropping, keeps dropping, going down. And she starts to feel the pressure. I will definitely go and check out this drama because it's led by Lam Mu Yangzi and Wan Peng, also featuring Jai Zi Lu. I really like these two actresses for very different reasons and I haven't even heard about this project before but now I know it's there. I will definitely go and check it out since it has Lam Mu Yangzi. It must be funny. Then a week later, on April the 18th, the long-awaited period fantasy drama most of my audiences know about Xia, Who Rules the World led by Yang Yang and Zhao Lusi is scheduled to go live. Can't even remember how many times I've mentioned this project on my channel when it starts shooting, during this shooting, uh, all the leaked photos and stuff. In case you don't know, there, there's a huge sort of big gossip <laughs> behind the scenes between the producer and the director of this project. They were working together on Qian Gu Chen, and because of their personal breaking relationship. The producer cancelled her uh, partner's name out of the production listing. So now if you go and look at who rules the world, look at all the credits uh, in their materials that you see on their social media posts, they don't mention the director. <laughs> the producer erased the director. In terms of the drama itself, wait till it comes out and see if it's worth watching. And the two leads are dubbed. Although, uh, Zhao Lu's dubber is a dubber who sounds 80% identical to her. They have very, very similar voice. So you probably wouldn't even realize she is dubbed while you watch this drama because the dubber sounds so much like her. Let's see if it's a worth watching a pro big period fantasy drama. Come to think of it, up to this point, April 2022, there hasn't been one period setting Chinese drama that really got me excited. The ones that I loved are all contemporary or within, let's say, the setting of the last 50 years. The weird thing about Chinese Romland is one of its super attractive element to non-Chinese people are its historical period content that's unique to it. But then, on the other hand, we rarely get good productions in this genre these days now. Then let's talk about a couple of dramas that have wrapped during this week. And they have all been mentioned before on my channel. Number one is 赤道, Falling to You. Just ignore the doesn't make sense English title. It's the 
sports-focused drama led by Wang Anyu and Jin Chen. She plays his coach in track and fields, and they've released a finishing shooting wrapping special video and looking good. I cannot wait. Wang Anyu, eye candy person for me. And then Jin Chen, wow, the lady has muscles. She, she's like got tighter muscles than 90% of the men out there. In the wrapping special feature video, they have a certain scenes on set when they shot it, like they do trainings together. And I was like, wow bodies, the muscles, the, the lines <laughs> while they were doing a Russian twist. I'm like, oh. I'm not only drooling, okay, I'm also just being a little bit jealous. As a person who just has no sports talent, side note is my mom was actually really good at sports when she was younger. Great marks woman, she does volleyball. She belongs to our school's volleyball team and she's just good at sports. That part of her DNA package completely missed me and she often jokes is like are you really my daughter because i don't have it something that you don't have and you know no matter how hard you try you just don't have it therefore you you're super super aware of other people having it when i see you know people who are really really good at sports i'm like i wish i could know what it feels like i'm definitely gonna check out this drama when it airs whenever okay then the next drama that got wrapped is Long Cheng, the drama that's led by Bai Yu, Ma Yili, also featuring Li Ting Ting, Liu Ling, Gao Xing, Wang Shengdi, so many familiar faces. I think previously it has a different name, English one, okay? Chinese name didn't change because it's based on a novel called Long Cheng, but now it's said memory in the city of dragon <laughs> so it's a direct translation now whereas before it's not a direct translation it's more talking about the concept of the story but obviously for all the old back in 2018 you know following the whole of guardian people out there you know why it's ex kind of extra exciting for uh, for you because the title of the drama dragon city Dragon City is the same name that Guardian's novel story is setting since it's contemporary drama probably wouldn't take too long to finished post-production. Do you have the hope of seeing it before the end of the year? And probably the Longxi period drama is gonna show up at the end of this month. I think next week we're gonna hear news about confirmation. So at least we're gonna have two dramas by Yu lead this year. And then the doctor drama, he leads with Yang Mi also is likely to come out somewhere this year. So that will make it three. If that's the case, well, good for everybody who likes him. Also a drama I haven't heard before wrapped during this week called Zhao Liang Ni, A Date with the Future. Okay, so this time the English title and the Chinese title have no relationship with each other. Zhao Liang Ni literally means light you up. Like I'm a light bulb and I <laughs> make you bright. It's a contemporary drama led by Chen Weiting and Zhang Ruonan. It's a firefighter focused contemporary drama. If you're interested in this pairing of Chen Weiting and Zhang Ruonan, you have something to look forward to. And then to wrap up today's video, during this week, a couple of dramas have started to file for airing on satellite television and internet. And for the news that came out about how they filed their content, we've noticed something that long fantasy period dramas have decided to start doing. You probably have already noticed that with the Blue Whisper that they intentionally break it into one and two because of NRTA's restriction of not encouraging dramas going over 30 episodes type of thing and not going over 40 for sure. These dramas all decided to have upper, lower, number one, number two, part one, part two. I've been talking about since last year about restricting the length of dramas. And now you see in reality um, how it gets practiced. When you have a policy, you have a way of dealing with that. So these dramas are Xin Han Tan Lan, Love Like Galaxy with Zhao Lu Sen Wu Lei. The drama has been filed as part one, 30 episodes, part two, 26 episodes. So it's actually a 56 episodes drama that they just manually broke it into two. It's funny that they have to do it but also it's like well if you can do it and then this way of doing it passes i don't know the policy restriction and what's the point of having the policy in the first place if you can just go around it like that and then the changxiang si that's just started filming i've mentioned last time with yang zi and tan jian si and the the other couple of uh, actors that period fantasy drama before it even finished, now has been filed as a upper part 35, lower part 35. 
So entirely 70 episodes drama. Also, Chen Xiang Ru Xie, the drama that has a lot of uh, controversy surrounding it since it started shooting last year because of Yang Zi's fandom and whatever. That period drama with her and Cheng Yi leading it, it's all done. It should come out this year if nothing goes wrong. This one has been filed also as part one and part two. And part one, 40 episodes. Part two, 40 episodes. So it's a freaking 80 episodes in total fantasy drama. Ah! Like this one pushes it to the limit because 40 is like the cap number. And we're just gonna call it part one and part two and with a different title. What do you think? Okay, what do you think about this situation? I think it has just so many different angles that you can look at this and laugh at the ridiculous nature. I restrict your length, but then you figure out a way to go around it just in the name of it. At the core of it is basically how dramas are made and sold in China. That's wrong and doesn't make sense, which is based on episodes count. The longer it is, the more expensive it is. I have a 20 episodes perfectly wrapped up story, but now we're gonna just water it down to 30 and 40 because we can make twice the money, but then the story up. So this whole system of selling dramas based on episodes can't, should stop. It causes this kind of stupid actions from all parties and then it causes drama quality to just plummet. <sighs> you know, think about the golden days of Japanese dramas back in the 80s and 90s. The standard 11 episodes, one drama, but holy shit, there's so much content and so much going on, the twists, the character developments, exploding with energy. <sighs> How far have we fallen, really, <laughs> as content creators in this world overall, right? Over the last how many decades? I mean, particularly bad in Chinese drama land, but overall everywhere else as well. I started to get really renty today. Sorry about that. Thank you for watching Avenue X. If you want to check out these cute things, no pressure, okay? No pressure. Right now, my focus is on making a new product available. That's a totally different thing I've mentioned about this thing. I've been working on this like crazy for the last half a year. I enjoy making them so much that um, I don't care <laughs> if it actually will become a valid business. I'm just gonna go ahead with it and hopefully it will work out somehow. <laughs> that should be the end of this video. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.